Okay, we're totally freaking out right now. We just hit a huge rock. We've never hit anything before. And uh, this just sucks, so. Yeah, we're remote, man. This we're sucks. remote, go. 30 knot gust, just remember. And we're gonna hit it again if we're not. I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Okay. 28 countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. The other interesting things that we're coming across in Indonesia is the fact that they have a lot of these really cool marine reserves and marine parks set up. But at home when we set up a marine park or a marine reserve, it's kind of like a no-take zone, like you don't fish there. But here, <laughs> the, the locals fish right through it. So we're at a marine reserve right now. The guys were like taking lobster and taking things right from there. There's still a lot of fishing. They fish with dynamite here. They fish with nets, they fish with lines, they fish with spears. I mean, it's it, it's part of life and I and I totally get it. I mean, it, it's just, this is their, where they come to fish and where they probably fish for years. So I don't, I don't know why they bother to set up these marine reserves, but I hope that perhaps some of these areas in the future do become perhaps a tiny bit more protected so that the coral has time to recover because right now it's it's good, but it's a bit dire in spots. Where the heck are we? What island is this? Oh, well, Indonesia. We're not sure. And the anchorages are so deep here and there's already a dive boat tied up to the mooring that's near here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to let Nahoa, the mothership, drift. <laughs> We've never done this before, I'm a little bit nervous. So we're gonna let the mothership drift in the, the tide and the current and the wind and she's just gonna float away. Hopefully not towards land, there's a nice empty space below this island. And we're gonna go for a snorkel. We'd hope to do a dive but it's just too much, too late in the day. We have a good time free diving, we actually love free diving. And as much as diving is like a real treat and a really awesome way to get a little bit deeper in the water. A lot of these reefs are really super alive in the shallower like zero to ten meters. So we're gonna do a snork, that's cool. We're really excited to just check out this little reef here. Well, I'm really excited. How excited are you? I wonder where Nahua will be when we come up. I gotta get the tide right though. I gotta get the current right because she's gotta drift offshore, not onshore. We'll drift for a second here, see what happens and then and then jump in with the dinghy. We'll take the dinghy so we can get back to the mothership. <laughs> We're not gonna rely on our fins, are we? No. Okay, so wish us luck. We'll let you know how it goes. We've seen it all. We see things that are kept out of the sight for the average tourist. We witnessed giant purse saners just out of the sight of the Galapagos coastline hunting massive schools of tuna. Spotlight fishing is a part of daily life here in Indonesia. In Panama, they were using squirt bottles filled with bleach to flush octopus from the reef. Shark finning is how the locals in the outer islands of Papua New Guinea make the majority of their year's income. It's rare, but sometimes local fishermen realize they will literally not be able to feed their families if their local reef dies. As we made landfall in the Philippines, a hunt was underway for an illegal dynamite fishing operation. But where does the dynamite come from? From the local police. See all that tiny broken coral? It almost looks like a bed of small rocks. That's an example of recent dynamite fishing. Yet, in the middle of it all is a giant clam. And a few meters over, the abundance of life is unfathomable. Evidence of human activity is in every corner of this globe. Every beach in this world is covered with tiny bits of plastic. It wouldn't be an understatement to say the human species is a pest. Like 
40 seconds. Slacker. <laughs> that was windy as ass. What's up with this wind, man? Keep kiting with it, except there's no kite beaches. Shit, you're out of breath. It's crazy cold, too. Like, I've got a long sleeve shirt on, and I'm thinking going to put some pants on. Ben doesn't seem to be affected. Oh, it's nice to be cold. I haven't been cold in like months, years. Been covered in sweat for like four years. <sighs> we're just coming up to a pass, and there's the massive tide line we're gonna hit, and the current against wind up here is fierce. And I think it must be extra strong, but there's literally a standing wave, like just up here, and we're gonna hit it. We're trying to deke around the side a little bit, and then cross it at an angle so it's not quite as bad. But I think it's gonna be bad. Ooh. What does that mean? You're scared? No, nah, it just means I'm concentrating. There's this Indonesian boat ahead of us who just went through this tide rip and it got tossed. It's way bigger than us. Check this that. thing out. Like, uh, I don't know about this. Should we turn around? Like what is it? What happens when you hit that back, Eddie Ben? I don't know that that's a, that's a good idea. Like you might just get spun. You want to stay on the left of the thing. Then you need to stay on the left of this rip. You have to stay in this rip. When you look back, there were all these warning signs: a tide rip, 30 plus knot gusts, no one around in a pretty touristy park, dark, gloomy weather. Your wife seems on edge. I can't explain it. Come on, we can do this. What's our speed? We're just doing a cool 12 knots. And uh, kudos to Ben, he steered us clear of the worst of those waves. Even though it made me nervous going that close to shore with that many whirlpools. I guess I have to trust the captain a little bit. Don't tell him that. We're on the lookout for Komodos, Komodo dragons. We'll see if we find any. I better go drive. Go drive, it looks like we're gonna hit a little It's crazy out here. Very, very windy in the gusts, very. Okay, we're totally f***ing freaking out right now. We just hit a huge f***ing rock. We've never hit anything before. And uh, this just sucks, so. No, we're remote, man. This we're sucks. remote, go. Thirty knot gusts, just remember. Ben, we're gonna hit it again if we're not careful. I gotta turn us around. <laughs> Okay, there's a, uh, oh, my heart's beating. Um, there's gel coat damage, uh, there's like scrapes on the forward. There's all the, ma the biggest damage is to the keel. So there's just some like, a uh, little bit of fiberglass showing through on the keel, but there's no holes, none. Are you sure? There's no holes. Let me just check the build. He drove us right into a rock. A big one. A big rock. There was a lot of white on the bottom, and the whole right side of the boat came out of the water.
I think we're okay. No cracking, there's no water coming in. And when I snorkeled it from underneath, it was, it looked fine too. There's just some scrapes. So. I think we're fine. Got lucky on this one, man. Got real lucky. I do not handle these kind of things very well. <laughs> not at all. Uh, I gotta make sure we don't hit another one. Problem is that was on satellite imagery too. It just wasn't, wasn't good looking at it. Wasn't zoomed in enough. Fuck me. Saw the depth coming up. It was like 20 meters, 15, 10, put a neutral, nine, six, five and then it's like reverse and then kaboom so i'd stop the boat we we're going into the wind too and there's like 30 knot gusts so that would have stopped the boat as well and i don't see any cracking so i think we're good i think it's time for a lunchtime beer <gasps> well there's no mooring balls here like they were supposed to be oh we're just gonna go oh that was annoying yeah you hit a rock I slowed Big down. Rock. I was in neutral. And you hit it pretty fast, dude, and it's on satellite imagery. Well, shit happens, man. We've been sailing for four or five years, you know? Shit eventually will hit the fan, and the boat just hit the rock. I mean, it wasn't even as bad as shit hitting the you fan. You can't even look at the camera while you're talking. <laughs> There's no cracks in the bottom of the hull. There's no protrusions through the hull. There's simply just some Jellico damage. A little bit of fire rail showing. And yeah, that's it. There's no cracks or anything. It's not that bad. Sure felt that bad. Fucking felt like we climbed a mountain on the starboard side. I think the reef is a little damaged. We'll not tell the rangers that one. Uh, Komodos. It was a rock. It was not a reef, it was a rock. There was a lot of white paint on that rock. And we don't have white paint. It's white gel coat. It's white gel coat. <laughs> I gotta put some beer on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he haven't even have a beer today. He didn't even have one yet. People, first thing you do when you hit a rock, you put the beer in the fridge. Well, that's a bit scary. We don't want to repeat that ever again. And it looks like we're gonna have to probably go and haul pretty quick, eh? Nah, we're good. It's a bit gnarly here, I'm not gonna lie. 30 knot gusts, no mooring balls like they're supposed to be. You're not meant to anchor in over 35 meters in the park. We're inside Komodo Park. Um, it's meant to be kind of cool here. Like the lizards are supposed to be swimming out to the boat um, at some point. Like if you anchor out here, they can swim out. They're a little attracted to the Phoenicis that are often here and then I think throw the food scraps over. It's just like the conditions aren't great today and so we probably shouldn't have bothered but we did and here we are and we hit a rock. F fantastic. That's oh, rattling because we're in the middle of nowhere. We'd had a hole. I don't know man. She was standing on the front. She should have seen it. Where that she was bow watch. I was not bow watch. I was looking for mooring balls with the binoculars, not down in the ocean. Oh. oh my God, the boat literally came up like this out of the water. Anyways, the worst case scenario did not happen, so let's continue on our jolly way and have a jolly day. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I don't think well, this won't even make the cut. This is not even going on YouTube. Cut. 